Psalm 91, verse 11, just wait there, I'll join you. He gives his angels what? Command over us. Say it together. He gives his angels command over us. And they will guard you in all your ways, all your paths. You can turn around and face the people, Naomi. That's all right. All right, let's say it together. God gives his angels charge over us. So we thank the Lord for that prophetic word. We say yes and amen. I believe God has angels on assignment. Heaven is involved with your life, right? Say it together. Heaven is involved with my life, involved with protection, involved with our financial blessings, involved with health. Praise the Lord. They are with us and we need not fear, but walk in faith. Where's faith come from? Faith comes by hearing. Romans uh, whoo, 10 verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? All right. So and now turn around and tell somebody, I'm capable and so are you. So let's step out in the things of God. What matters is what the Lord is saying. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear, the Bible says. Now let's extend our hand towards Naomi. And let's just ask the Lord to bless her. Just pray for a little bit, kind of out loud there. Amen. Keep going. You have grown and you have grown and you have grown. Closer to the Lord and closer in your walk with God. We speak blessing over you and we thank you for obeying the Lord, stepping out to encourage the body of Christ. And we just ask the Lord to continue to bless you as you set an example. And everybody say, amen. All right. Well, let's just praise the Lord because it's fun, can we? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have a few announcements to make, so bear with me. And then we'll dive right into the Word of God. For those of you watching us online, we just speak blessing to you. Thank you for joining us today, and we speak healing to you. For those of you that are suffering or not well, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. We pray for you. We love you. Let's say together, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, if you were not able to listen to the service on Wednesday, I'd like to ask you all to go back and listen to it and be encouraged. Now, three times in that service, I asked people, don't turn me off, say together, don't turn me off online or in the room. How many of you know you can turn the speaker off and still be sitting here? Please listen, say together, please listen. And you know, I know some of you, uh, uh, that needle is right next to that nerve. If you remember the example when they put in one of the, what do you call those things for whatever it is, IV, uh, they had that needle next to a nerve and oh, this hand hurt for seven days, terrible. It hurt for over a month afterwards and bruised. And it's because it was laying next to a nerve. Of course, it was no one's fault. They didn't intend to do that at all. And they did a great job of taking care of me. But <clears throat> in this season, a lot of people, probably all of us, there are certain things that are just too close to the nerve. You mentioned the word COVID, etc. People get a little bit bent out of shape. So I used two Wednesdays, like I did coming into the conference, identifying some of the things that we're dealing with and trying to put into language some of the challenges that we face so we could better understand what's going on all around us. Hello? You can go to the beach, remember the example, and the red flag is out, and they won't let you swim. That's because it may look safe, but underneath there's a riptide. Hello? And that riptide's dangerous. In the spirit realm, there's a lot going on around us. So I want to make a few announcements about uh, COVID, all right? Say again. Okay, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Now, you know, <clears throat> well, I don't want to hear about it. Well, let's say this together. We're a family. There are 160 of us. And Lord, I just ask you to help me in Jesus' name. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm not bitter. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm trying to help us as a church family. Hello? Praise the Lord. And we are a family. We know Jesus. We're knit together. This is our home church. There are 161 of us-ish over 60 years of age. There are approximately 240 of us below age 18. Hello? That's uh, 400 people. Say again, that's 400 people. There's another almost 600 that are between 20 and 60, and you're my biggest problem. Hello. Praise the Lord. Some of them are owning up to it. <clears throat> that's all right. Just remember, you're going to reap what you've been sowing, you honorary rascals. <clears throat> and so uh, be patient with me while I try to explain a few things. First of all, I want, others, I want all of us to say this. Things in life are not just about me. 
One more time, that felt good. Things in life are not just about me. There's actually other people all around us. Right now, we have about 70 people on a list, the pastors do, that are wrestling with COVID. Now, some of those by now have tested negative. That's, that's just now. There have probably been over 300 of us that I know of that have tested positive with COVID in the last year and a half. 70, so they got the 70. That's just right here. My phone probably, you know, I have to respond to somewhere between 10 and 20 crisis situations a week with our extended family. Hello? We have over 10,000 guests that have been in our church. Over 350 have been ordained just in America. Would you say this with me? We have a big family. And I'm asking a lot of questions within our local church as well as outside. And our pastors do a great job of reaching out to people and helping people and praying for people and trying to answer questions. Hello? Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for our pastoral team. There are 10 of us. I appreciate all nine of them. Now, let me just help you a minute that the decisions we make in terms of policy and what we try to do to take care of you and feed you are discussed in our pastor's meetings. I don't come in here for two hours and tell everybody what to do, contrary to what you may think. We sit down, we talk together, we pray together, we communicate, we share the things God is speaking to us that are relevant to us as a church and relevant to us as pastors. Our conferences, our themes, our titles, who speaks, where we go, who is sent where. We talk about all these things, hello? We pray into all these things, say it together. Thank you, Lord, for our pastors. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> This morning at 1 o'clock, walking people through death of a loved one. This morning at 3 o'clock, walking another family through death of a loved one. And happy to be of service. If you're ill, we're just asking people stay at home, even if it's just cold-like symptoms. People have COVID, a lot of times don't even know it. People may have COVID for several days before the symptoms begin. You can go online and find a list of symptoms. And you may have some of them. You may not have all of them. Probably no one has all of them. But if you have COVID, you'll have some of them. We encourage people that have symptoms to get a test. You can get a test in any county for free. How many of you have had a test? Well, they'll do, they might not want to say that because Lord have mercy. I've had, I think, at least 13 of them, probably more like 15 or maybe 20. They don't hurt. Say together, they don't hurt. And I've had my face smashed. I've had restoration surgery, and I've had sinus surgery, and I'm telling you, it doesn't hurt. As a matter of fact, it tickles. It feels like a bug went up your nose. Some of you may agree or disagree with that, but I guess it, it depends on what a bug up the nose feels like to you. Many have found the self-test kits are helpful. You can administrate those at home. We just came back from Mexico, Pastor Eric, Pastor Isaac, and myself. When I came home, I had to test before I could get on a plane to get back into America. I was negative. I tested when I home, I was negative. Those kits that you can get, they're not very expensive. If you need one and can't afford it, we'll buy it for you. And I tested the other day and I was still negative. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, if you have symptoms and you test and you're negative, but the symptoms don't go away, test again. First time may have been negative, but you may uh, have COVID. All right. Everybody all right so far? So yeah, thanks, Pastor. I came for this. I'm encouraging people, if you have symptoms, please talk to your doctor. If you test positive, please talk to your doctor. Say again, please talk to your doctor. Don't wait too long. Most people wait too long. And you need, the sooner you get help, the better. And uh, they may recommend, depending on your condition, whether you've had vaccination or not, they may recommend what's called an antibody infusion. How many have heard of that? 
And so people call, what's this? I'm a little scared. That's okay, call. We'll help you best we can. We're recommending you follow a doctor's advice. And uh, I would say this to you. If your doctor suggests you get an antibody, antibody infusion, go ahead and follow your doctor's advice. Hello? Everyone I know that have received that, it has been very, very helpful in getting them through these challenges, the physical challenges. All right? And as I've been informed by doctors, dad and others, they said, a lot of times people wait too late. And when they wait too late, it's really hard for us to help them if they have a real difficult situation. Why am I telling you this? Because as pastors, we're dealing with a lot of people in our own church family, as well as our extended church family. And it behooves people to hear me say it online. Hello? Thank you very much. Now, if you test positive for COVID and you've been vaccinated, if you test positive, they recommend you stay in quarantine for 10 days after your symptoms began. Say so together, 10 days after your symptoms began. And sometimes these change. If you've not been vaccinated, they recommend 14 days before you come out of quarantine after you had first symptoms. Say it together, first symptoms. And it's best to have negative results before returning back to work and in public places. Thank you very much. Everybody said amen. Now, as a church family, please wear your mask as you come in and out. If you're able to, we appreciate it. When you stand in worship, please wear your mask. Keep a healthy distance between you and others that are not in your family or in your social group means no hugging, no face-to-face -face communication, no wandering around a sanctuary, talking to people, hugging people, getting in their face and touching them. You're welcome. <laughs> now, say it together. I have a responsibility. When a socialite comes around and wants to buzz around you and touch you and get close and get in your face, go like this, please. Gets translated to another planet. No, please. Give me a little space. Say it together, please. If you're uncomfortable, put your hand right here. You have a job to do. Yeah, but they're in the church. I know. All the more reason. Okay, moving right along. Keep your hands sanitized. Mom, Dad, we have a wonderful opportunity to, the last year and a half, draw really close to God, strengthen our families, spend time with our spouses, pray together more, spend time with our children, and especially coming to church. Can I hear an amen? Some of my most fond memories are going to church with my family as a child every Sunday. And drive to town, sitting together, worshiping together, being with my parents, being with my family, a wonderful opportunity. Hello, we have people that are sick right now. Some have COVID right now. Some barely have any signs, symptoms at all, but some are really struggling. So let's keep them in our prayers. No condemnation, say God, no condemnation. No judgment. Don't let the enemy beat you up if you get sick. It's not your fault. We don't want anyone to be ashamed or anyone to be embarrassed. You're dealing with the virus. Some are going to get it. Some are not. Some families are going to struggle with it. Even now, we have several children that have COVID from multiple different schools. All together, I think we come regularly from 18 different counties. Turn around and tell somebody, that's a lot. Some of these children, their entire classrooms are in quarantine. Some of the family has COVID now, some do not, which is a bit of a mystery. Hello? There are a lot of mysteries with this whole thing. So I'm giving you information, questions that I answer on a regular basis through the week, just trying to get people at peace. It's okay. Say, God, it's okay. Don't wait too long. Go see the doctor. Don't struggle and suffer. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, we just had our prophetic gathering. One young man in a very good way with a very good attitude said, Pastor, do you think a lot of people are sick because we had a conference? No, actually I don't. They're sick because COVID's all around us. Hospitals are full, emergency rooms are full, classes, students are sick, children are sick. Some of the classrooms are in quarantine all over, all around us, hello? State after state, hospital after hospital, the numbers are higher now than they ever have been in a year, year and a half. 25% of people tested are showing up positive, and we don't even know how many. They don't even know how many have self-tested at home and haven't had any type of public testing. So let's be wise. Say together, let's be wise. All right. Now, let's say together, God is good, and I'm glad I'm here. I hope you're still with me. 
And I hope those of you that are online are still with us. Online are still with us. During the conference, I tried to spend the first couple of sessions. I've been sharing some of that on Wednesday night. If you weren't here on the last couple of Wednesday night when I spoke, I would just ask you as your pastor, please uh, listen, go online and listen. I try to identify some of the pressures around us that we're dealing with and put it into language to help us understand what it is that we're wrestling with, that our world has changed in many ways. Um, and, and many of our systems are suffering. Healthcare system is suffering, education, the children in our schools. Many things have changed, even the way we buy groceries. And so there's a lot of pressure. Let's identify it. Let's focus on the right things and move forward with God. The kingdom things, which was even in one of those prophetic words today. Amen? Okay, you say amen once in a while, good and loud now, so I can hear you. <clears throat> and we just want to see all of us get through this and be blessed and strengthened. And all the church said, yes. I want to thank you for listening and being patient with me. Remember when we first started walking through all of that? Actually, the Lord began to speak to us on staff in December of 2019, 24 months ago. And we began to prepare for such a time as this, especially in March, it's in January, and then in March at the School of Ministry. And at the, at the prophetic gathering, I tried to share with people some of the things that God had put on my heart. That the next couple of years are going to have a lot of challenges. How many of you heard that? And that as we move into this winter, there's going to be a tremendous rise in pneumonia and flu and RSV, I think it's called, especially with children, as well as COVID. We're going to have a challenging winter. I'm not cursing you. I'm not speaking negative, And I'm not walking in unbelief. These are the facts. And it's actually happening all around us. So let's say it together. Be healthy. Get some rest. Be sure to drink plenty of fluids. Eat healthy and get some exercise. These things help us stay well. Hello? Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Now, this is not, a, it, the church is under attack more than I've seen in 51 years of being a believer and under attack more than I've seen in 39 years of pastoring. So this is not a good time to ignore facts. Hello? It's not a good time to ignore symptoms. Put your hand on your chest. Pastor, I can't breathe. I have chest pains. Would you say this with me? I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray now. And you head on over to the doctor. You head on over to the hospital. Well, I'm fine. I don't have COVID. I didn't say you had COVID. I said you have chest pains and can't breathe. You need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the hospital. Oh, I'll be all right. This is not a normal season. Those are not normal conditions. And I've been directly involved with people being buried because they had a heart attack because they wouldn't go to the hospital. Recent. Hello. Just go like this. Let's get rid of lies. Let's get rid of fear. Let's help one another. Let's encourage one another. Let's pray for one another. And let's be wise during this season. I know a lot of people, Kate, now I believe in all the mess. God's going to bless us. Hello. That God's going to bless us. And what instructions did the Lord give us over 20 months ago? Let's say together. Number one, take care of people. Make sure they're safe. Number two, build a storehouse. Say together, build a storehouse. And he said, I will bless you. Number three, feed the hungry. Say together, feed the hungry. Now grab a hold of that. Those instructions are not dead, but we are in a different season. It's a little bit different season. We're doing all we can. We're being wise. We're going to trust God and we're going to move forward. Hello? No, I don't believe that we have 60 some people sick now. Some were sick before, some during, some after, almost 70. And some of those uh, are already in a negative and already well. But some are really suffering and some are headed to the hospital today. Now, just kind of hold your hands like this and help me out just a minute. I want to encourage you along these lines. I think this might help us. This is COVID. This is a disease. This is a sickness. Say it together. We're going to deal with this. And we're going to be wise. Now, every single nation and many of the people that we've ordained are really, really struggling in these other nations. However, a nation's political leaders for a nation or locally, the decisions they make, that's a separate issue. Say it again. That's a separate issue. 
And however they are doing what they do, maybe even taking advantage of a health situation, a pandemic, to promote their own value systems, their own beliefs. Hello, that's separate than what we're trying to do to stay well, take care of our families, and bless the church family. Can I hear an amen? Thank you very much. They need our prayers. We can be a voice. We can vote, but don't mix the two. Hello? And when you are having some physical problems, don't hesitate. Don't let guilt or shame or anything keep you from going. And there are a lot of mind battles right now. Hello? Part of the assignment of the enemy through COVID is to attack the mind, whether you have COVID or whether you don't or didn't. It's the result of a spiritual battle taking place in the spirit realm. Hello? So professionals are telling us over 50% of America right now is struggling with mental or emotional issues that are serious. It's related to the pressures that we're identifying, but yet wanting to stay focused on the gospel and move forward together as a church family. Can I hear an amen? Praise God. Thank you for listening. Let's pray. Now, Lord, as we enter into the word, we ask you to help us. I pray that my words would be yours and your words would be mine. And that we would be a people that just walk in love and encourage of the Lord and swift to pray for one another and help one another to be there in times of trouble and times of challenges. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for the way you've led us and guided us and directed us. And all the church said, amen. All right, now let's open your Bible to James chapter two, if you would. And uh, I pray that you can hear this word. Let's say it together, openly, openly. And we need to be praying in a regular basis, Lord, help me to hear, help me to listen, help me to understand. Praise the Lord. Now, when I go uh, to the doctor, um, I always take a pen and paper, but I prefer to take my wife. Now, if I can't take my wife, my, and she has not been able to go with me through any of the situations I've dealt with in the last year because her immune system has been compromised. And so she cannot be in these places. So joy goes with me. Does anybody know why I take a pen and paper and why I take another human being? Number one, I'm a man. Men don't remember things very well. Number two, you're talking about things I don't even know what you're talking about. Hello? Number three, I don't like being there. So I need somebody. I don't use a computer, and now almost everything is on computer. They don't hand me anything. They send me a text message with a code so I can get on a computer and find out what that word that's this long printed, what it actually is. Some of those, when I was in the hospital, those specialists would come in there, you have blah, 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 and we're going to blah, 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 blah. And I'm writing, I say, how do you spell that? And this is what usually the doctor would say, I don't know. Well, at least it made me feel a little more comfortable that I wasn't the only one in the room that can't spell a word that long. Would you say this with me? We need each other. And I'm trying to help the body of Christ here. And I actually had leaders contact me. Uh, Well, you know, I understood you said this at the conference. The easy part's over. Yes, I did. The next two years are going to be more challenging for us than the previous two. I've tried to get my own congregation ready, get ready for inflation over a year ago. Between November and now, it takes an average family $173 more a month than it did Uh, last November before the election. Hello? And I'm trying to get you ready that in the next 12 months, it'll go up another 20%. It'll take 120 instead of 100 to do what you're doing now. Now, say it together, we're not afraid. But that anointing of Issachar, it understood the times. And it could look ahead and knew what to do and when to do it. Hello? Hello? So I could stand up here and prophesy all kind of flowering things. I don't mean to be critical of positive prophetic words. But how many of you know the facts are very helpful and the Holy Spirit is just as good at helping us with words of knowledge, come on, and words of wisdom as he is giving us prophetic utterance. 
I plan on prospering. I plan on the church prospering. I plan on leading you into blessing. Beloved, 3 John verse 2, I love this verse. Here's a prophet. Uh, here's an a apostle, an apostle of love. He used to be a son of thunder before he met Jesus. He writes under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. My intercessory prayer for you is that you would be healthy, whole, well. Hello? And that you would prosper. Hold your hand out. Have everything you need to do what God wants you to do. And that you would have the mind of Christ and that all those things, the health, the prosperity, etc., having the things God wants you to have to do what you do is related to the way you think. So you have the mind of Christ. Can I hear an amen? All right. Now, I want to share this word with us because I believe the body of Christ needs to hear it. I'm not rebuking anyone. I'm not attacking anybody. So uh, I, I, I'm not correcting anybody. I want to help the body of Christ in this hour. Praise God. All right. The title of this is Mercy Triumphs Over Judgment. Say it with me. Mercy Triumphs Over Judgment. Now, I'm going to try my best to preach for 20 minutes. For those of you that maybe are watching online never, or maybe a visitor never been here before, it's not difficult for me to preach 20 minutes. The challenge of it is to try to quit in 20 minutes. Hello? Go ahead and tell somebody he can preach a long time. Go ahead. Tell him. Yes, now go ahead and tell him, but it's usually our fault because we come hungry. We come thirsty. Hello? And uh, I'm telling you, folks, that'll change things. James chapter 2, verse 13. Now, we'll get there in a little bit, but the last phrase of that, the last sentence, is that mercy triumphs over judgment. Let's say it one more time. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, let me just say that every one of us need to hear this message. Every one of us. And meditate on it and give thought to it. Because there's not a one of us on a daily basis that is not challenged with judgment. It's so easy to judge other people. Hello? Now, mercy means, say it with me, I choose mercy. I choose not to be judgmental. Come on. We need to do that every day through the day. Mercy means to have compassion. Mercy means to be tender towards people in words and action. Let's grab that. How many of you know that's what we need? And judgment means that you've made a decision of accusation. You've made a decision of condemnation. Hello? So maybe I'll get up here like last Wednesday and I'll say, listen, I want to identify some things we're dealing with. I want to give you a little bit of advice. I don't want to hear about COVID and I don't know why you waste any time with that because there are a thousand of us. And every pastor had a list with 68 names on it. And some of them are in the hospital. Some are little children. Entire classrooms are in quarantine. And people are calling and asking for advice and help. That's why. Not to mention 10 to 20 calls a week. Personally. One o'clock this morning, I'm comforting people who had loved ones die. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm comforting people who had loved ones die. I'm not in trauma. This is life. I'm not lacking faith. I know the author of it. His name is Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1, he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. And the words we receive that are full of faith come by having relationship with him, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing a personal word from God as you spend time with him. I read some research the other day. Well, I don't have a trouble being judgmental. Yes, you do, especially if you don't know you have it. If you say, I don't have trouble being judgmental, you're, you're already wrong. I don't remember the exact numbers. You can Google it and find out. But in a matter of seconds, we decide, we meet someone we never met. In a matter of seconds, we decide if we like them or not. You're a little bit more complex than a few seconds can figure out. Some of you have known for years. I, haven't, I don't know you any better than I did when I first met you. Go ahead and tell somebody, I can be a bit complex. Every woman should tell her husband that on a daily basis. Every man needs to realize very quickly, oh, without the help of God, I'm in trouble. Hello? My wife has a favorite color. I don't even know how you say it. 
God help me if I tried to say it. I'm afraid I'd say it so bad you'd just laugh until I was, well, is there such a color as magenta? Oh, she likes that color. It's her favorite color. And I bought her something to wear that's magenta. And she said, well, I don't like that. She said, I said, well, that's your favorite color. She said, it is, but not to wear. Oh, oh. every man should have known that. No, my favorite color is my favorite color. Now, how many of you know you could slide into being judgmental pretty quick if you're deciding if you like someone in a few seconds or not? I also read some research the other day. You can Google it and find it. How many of you have brown eyes? Raise your hand real high if you don't mind confessing your eye color. All right, how many of you have blue eyes? Just raise your hand real high if you don't mind confessing. How many of you have green eyes? Raise your hands. <clears throat> that we are actually at times judgmental based on the color of eyes. Now in the body of Christ, we need to step on the side of mercy and away from judgment or the next thing you know, the devil would divide us up off in little groups instead of let the Holy Spirit make us one. I had the privilege of going to Wolf Park one time. The people that managed it got saved and they invited me to come and I went with my wife and a few other people. And we went out, um, they took me out among the wolves <clears throat> and it was safe. And the alpha wolf, when we walked out there, he came right up to me, stood up on his back legs and put his paws on my shoulder, looked down into, he was way over seven feet tall, standing, looked down into my face and we were nose to nose. His teeth looked like that, but they were more like this. And that wolf, I put my, I just did what he did. I put my paws on top of his shoulders and looked him right in the eyes. And uh, after what seemed like a long time, but maybe only two or three minutes, that wolf got down on the ground and laid down at my feet, curled up like a, a dog by the wood stove. Hello? Now here's an interesting thing about that wolf. Remember, these stories are related to the message of what I was just teaching. That wolf had two different color of eyes, distinctly different. One of them was bright blue like a crystal, the one on the right, uh, his left, my right, and the other eye was brown. God forbid what we would do in separating people off that had two colors of eyes. Hello? And the eyes are alive. They're a window to the soul. So let's say together, let's choose mercy. Let's choose mercy. Let's move in this compassion and tenderness that <clears throat> actually is active through words and through actions. And everybody said amen. And let's move away from being judgmental and making a decision of accusation before we've even heard what's going to be said. How many of you know you can't really just take a little piece out of a speech and represent the whole theme of the message accurately without an effort? Mercy over judgment, and it triumphs. Why? Because mercy demonstrates the loving grace and compassion that we never deserved. How many of you know you never deserve the grace of love, the loving grace, the compassion that God gave to us? We didn't do anything to deserve that. We as believers are sometimes too slow to give away the same level of mercy, the same level of grace to others that we have received from the Lord. And we lack because we're not forgiving and demonstrating love in our words and actions. Just say it with me. I received grace and mercy, compassion when I came to know Jesus. Now, how many of you know freely what you've received, you ought to freely give away? His mercy erased all that judgment in my life. 
when I came to know Christ. Um, if, if maybe you've experienced this. Holy Spirit moves on you and you perceive maybe he'd have you come share a word and you're scared half to death. But you step out of your chair eventually, maybe weeks later, a month later, sometime. Maybe out when you're about at work, the, the Holy Spirit wants you to share Christ with somebody. But you're a little reluctant, maybe a little embarrassed, maybe afraid, <clears throat> or a lot of different other emotions. And the whole time the devil's beating you up. You're not good enough. You're not worthy. Who are you to think you could share with somebody? Remember, you got mad at someone at the stoplight the other day. One of my biggest challenges in life is somebody at a stoplight honking at me. Yeah, I'm not always shy. Hello? As if I can go somewhere. I got a red light. I got vehicles in front of me. I can't go anywhere. Why are you laying on the horn behind me? Go to heaven. Put your car in park first, though, so you don't hit my truck. One time I stopped at a stoplight over there on the other side of the river. I can show you exactly where it was. And some men in a Ford truck were behind me honking like crazy. And I'd had enough of that. Following me down 52, sitting behind me in a stoplight, laying on that horn. I got out of my truck, walked back to that truck, leaned in the window, and I said, are you having a problem? He said, oh, no, I'm obeying the sign. I said, what sign? On the back of my tailgate, someone had made a sign and taped it on there, and it said, honk if you love Fords. I said, oh, well, have a good day. I have to admit, I was not in the fruit of the Spirit when I leaned in that window. And those men were scared to death. But I changed. Don't ever put a sign on my tailgate again, Pam Wolf. Now, isn't it great to have brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that love you enough to cause you challenges? Man, that was a short response. You know, God wants to move us past the place where Thank God it's 2 o'clock and church is over. I've had enough of that. It's the tension you can feel in the spirit realm. And it should never replace what's going on with the Holy Spirit in the spirit realm. It should never replace it. In Luke chapter 15, I'll turn my Bible there. I'm reading out of RSV today. I think it's RSV, ESV, English Standard Version. And uh, my Bible's new, so bear with me. I just got it out of a box this morning. And uh, Luke chapter 15, it's the story of the prodigal. I'd like to read a portion for us. Verse 17, but when he came to himself, the son, right now by verse 17, he's living in a, he's working in a pig pen. He's eating foods that, food that pigs eat. He has nothing left. He went to his dad and he said, dad, I want what's mine. I'm leaving and the boy left, the young man left. He took his inheritance and wasted it all. He partied. He had all kinds of sin and immorality and all kinds of mess. He lost it all. And he found out his friends only hung around with him because they weren't really his friends because they were enjoying what his money could produce for them that's related to the soul. He wound up with nothing and wound up uh, feeding pigs. But he came to himself through repentance. How many of you know, without the grace of God, we don't even realize what really what's happening. It's only God that can open our eyes. How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I'm dying of hunger. I will arise, say that I will. Now, we're in a season of I will. Grab hold of that if you would. I will worship the Lord. I will pray in the Spirit. I will pray in my understanding. My prayer, as Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 11, our Father which art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I want my will to be your will. I will rise in repentance. I will rise and get out of this. I will return to God the Father. Come on, somebody. I've sinned against heaven. I'm going to tell my father, I've sinned against God and I've sinned against you. And that's the order. 
David demonstrated that when the prophet went to him. Oh, God, forgive me. Say, God, forgive me. Yeah, but what about Bathsheba and her husband that's been murdered and his family? Yeah, but I got to start with God. Say, I got to start with God. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. <clears throat> this is what he's saying. This is what the son is saying. Or daughter is saying, I'm not good enough to be called your daughter. Who told you that? Treat me like one of your hired servants. And he rose and went back. The last thing you want to hear for a son or daughter, you love them is I'm not good enough to be a son anymore. I'm not good enough to be a daughter. Who told you that? I never said that. Hello? He probably, although it doesn't exactly say it, expected punishment. When he got home, he probably expected punishment. And those are the kind of lies the enemy wants us to believe. But what happened? The father chose mercy, grabbed a hold of mercy, and ran to him. Saw him in the horizon, ran to him. A ring, a cloak, come on, sandals, a new walk, family signet, new covering, come on. All right here in Jesus. I was weeping the other day talking with Pastor Gary in a worship service. I said, the church isn't ready for what's coming yet. We're too judgmental. We're too critical. We're not ready to receive people and give God time to work with them in His grace the way He's worked with all of us. You know, we're like the prodigal. We recognize our sin. Not too long ago, I shared with the congregation that we don't need people telling us we're sinners. We already knew we were. What we need is people to tell us that there's an answer for our sin. And his name is Jesus. And that there's salvation been made available for, for us by way of mercy. We recognize our sin and like the prodigal, we find love and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. God's mercy is amazing. Say it with me. God's mercy is amazing. I'm going to try to close here soon. I, I want to be very sensitive to your needs and all that's going on around us, the demands that are here. Pastors contacted me. I communicated with them. I'm very grateful for all our pastors, men and women that we have, and very grateful to walk, work together. And then they had a question, very valid. You know, Pastor, we got so many people sick and numbers are going up and half of one family sick, half of another family. Uh, and th some of them are gonna be rotating, quarantining for a month, maybe longer. Think we ought to go ahead and have the men's gathering? Yes. Uh, well, I'll get back with you. I'll pray. I prayed four times that night, about an hour each in between, some rest. The fourth time the Lord spoke to me. He said, you remember what I told you? Like that. Yes, I remember. You told me to have the prophetic gathering. You told me to have the men's gathering. And you told me to have Pastor Rocha and those four men and four, three men and one woman in that dream, honor them, and the anointing in the gathering would be incredibly high, and it was. You told me to have Pastor Rocha help us on the line, and he did, and he did a great job. And you said to have him preach at the men's gathering. Grab a hold of that. Every one of us can testify to all those things being accurate. And I sent back a text, full steam ahead. 
I've done all I can up till now to keep you safe. And from here on out, we weather the storm. It's a different season. You've changed. Yes. I'm not planting corn tomorrow either. I'm not planting soybeans tomorrow either. It's too late to be planting winter wheat. Actually, it'd be a risk of loss. What do you mean by that? I know the season. You can agree or disagree. That'll be your choice. But for us, it's full steam ahead with wisdom and precaution. Come on. Okay. James 2. The worship team, you can come back in about five minutes. Give me five minutes. Real five minutes. My brothers, sisters, men, women, children, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Say it together. No partiality, no judgment, no favoritism. I got blue eyes. You got blue eyes. We're in a blue eye club. Divide everybody else off. Hmm. That's not very biblical. I took my grandson. We were at a, camp, we were at a park not too long ago here in Indiana. And I showed him. I said, now right there is where I led. I was about 13. The first African-American that I ever led to Jesus right there. And I began with this text. We were sitting on a log right here when I led this young man to the Lord. He was older than me. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, sit here in a good place, come up front with me, while you say to the poor man, you stand out there, you sit down by my feet, you stay in the back. I'm, I'm adding a few things, but I'm not adding to Scripture. Have you then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you have been called? Say it with me. Mercy triumphs over judgment. It's actually one of the Beatitudes. Matthew 5, 7. The first sermon of Jesus. The greatest sermon you'll ever read. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall inherit what? Mercy. You sowed mercy. Mercy's going to come back. Tenderness, kindness, with actions and words and deeds carried out. You demonstrated it. And in that choice, you decided to not be judgmental and, and bring accusation, especially when you don't even know the facts. Good decision-making, the journey to the success of the right decision involves obtaining the facts. All of us deserve judgment. But because of love and mercy through Jesus, willingly, willing to die on the cross, the Lord God, the Father, provided a way for all mankind to escape punishment through the sacrificial lamb of Jesus. Would you say it with me? All the prodigals can come home. They, God wants to take them out of, I'm not good enough to be a son or daughter anymore and come by way of mercy in the cross. Come on, come by way of mercy in the cross and come to know Christ, to receive an internal inheritance. Salvation demonstrates how mercy triumphs over judgment. 
James chapter 2, James is an apostle. He writes on inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Sort of like the gathering. Oh, good. We're going to have a prophetic gathering and it's going to be a great time and the prophetic words will be awesome. It'll all be good. We're going to have revival. We expect all kinds of good things from the Lord. Yeah, but next two years we're going to have some challenges. We've got to plan ahead. We need a special anointing of Issachar. We need to be wise in the midst of all the battles that we're going to be fighting against. A lot of the systems that we've enjoyed and liked so much are under attack. But don't let it distract you from what God has for you and keep focus on kingdom things that everybody said, amen. That's, I had leaders call me. Uh, I listened again to what you said, but we've decided what you were saying was for your church and not the body of Christ. I said, what I was saying was for the entire body of Christ from here and around the world and all the way back again in any direction you want to go. And this is what we're going to be battling with. Interpret however you want, but no, you heard it here and I clarified. I'm not cursing you. I'm not being negative. That's the way it's going to be. And God's going to bless us in the middle of it. Can I hear an Amen. Turn around and tell somebody, we're going to prosper and we're going to be blessed in the middle of it. Years ago, a few years ago, six different bank presidents, if I remember right, called Linda, called the church, wanting to see me, operating through Linda. She made an appointment for me to see each one of them per my, yes, I'll meet with them individually. They didn't know each one had called in our community. They wanted our business. They're wise. They're very wise to want our business. I took them on a tour through this building and a tour through that building, and we wound up at the same place, same exact tour, and the first bank president, which happened to be a man, some were men, some were women, the first one was a man, we got all the way back to the doors where the glory fell the first time I walked in that building, and everybody in the lobby fell out in the spirit. We were standing right there, and he turned to me and said, how did you do this? Now, that's a moment like this. He caught me off guard a little bit, and I needed Holy Spirit, so I, I prayed quietly. How many of you have done that? Lord, I need help. I don't know what to say. And put your hand right here. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I knew exactly what to say. I said, the Holy Spirit did this. He said, no pastor ever told me that before. I said, we just obey the Holy Spirit. Say it with me. We're led by the Holy Spirit. Listen, say this with me. The Holy Spirit makes us look good. The Holy Spirit makes us look good. When we do what Holy Spirit wants, when we walk in mercy, we walk in love, and we obey the Lord, and we show no partiality. We're not prejudiced towards anybody. He's going to make us look good. Say together. He's going to make us look good. So here's this prophet. Here's this apostle. Oh, we got a letter. What's he got to say? This will be awesome. Yeah, he says that we all need to be more merciful and less but judgmental. Well, I ain't come here for that. Well, we probably ought to pay attention to this. Especially now. Especially now. I don't remember. This number could be wrong. You can Google it. I never tried to misinform. Ever. That's deception. I may miss a fact or misquote something, but it'd be rare and it's fairly accurate. They've had more airlines, have had more problems at airports and airplanes than ever before. Something like 17, I read this while we were flying on our trip, 17,000 recorded situations. Many of them are going to pay huge fines. Many of them will never be able to fly again. And some of them are going to jail and some to prison. Why is this so abnormal in the last two years? Welcome to some of the pressure we're living in. It's all around us. What do you have to say? Well, we need to deal with a little problem called judgment. Where you show favoritism towards the rich and neglect the poor. You favored the rich and exploited the poor. 
He showed partiality to them while ignoring the needs of some. He even judged them with evil thoughts. But remember, we get to verse 8. I'll have to come to this later. Remember the kingdom law. Grab a hold of what matters. Kingdom. Grab a hold of what we really ought to focus on. Love your neighbor like yourself. <sighs> Lord, I need your help. Say, God, I need your help. He goes on to sum up the law in two commands of Jesus. I don't particularly like a mask. I find it hard to breathe most of the time with it, especially in light of what I've been through. They discovered part of my lungs are scarred because I've been poisoned somewhere in the past. God only knows where. I didn't do too good at first. Showed up in a line one time to get some food at a place. Outdoors, you line up. About 15 of us there and a great big rascal in the back, great big guy younger than me, got extremely mouthy. I was the only one there with the mask. I flunked. I was so aggressive that eight men got out of line, basically ran to their trucks and drove off. A little woman was there observing everything in the back. She worked for the state and she had on her, her um, it was cold, she had on her equipment to flag she came right beside me, between me and this big guy. She said, you know, sir, I have to agree with you. I think everybody ought to mind their own business. That's kind of what I said. There were about four or five men in front of me waiting on their order, and the guy opened the door, and he said, Mr. Johns, I have your order ready here. You can go now. I flunked. <clears throat> you ever flunk? Oh, Lord. Next time I... I thought I'd gotten a C, but the Holy Spirit reminded me I got a D minus. Grab hold some mercy. Next time one of you redneck big rascals in car hearts gets in my face about my mask, you're going to need Jesus. I had to change. I got an F on the first one, the lowest F you can get. I got a D minus on the second one. I'm not sure why. But now I've learned to say this. Grab hold of mercy. If why in God's name they pick on me? How many of you know I'm not a very likely candidate? That's a demon of stupidity in itself. Go up there and tell that guy he doesn't need his mask. Are you for real serious? Here's what I say now. Here's mercy. Only Holy Spirit can help us with this. You don't know what I'm going through. My those specialist pastor, please, 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 please. You get COVID, we won't be, you'll die. You're too injured right now. You have no idea what my wife went through. I'll decide if I need a mask or not. Thank you very much. You mind your own business. Get out of my face in a public place. I flunked. I didn't say that. I didn't tell them all that. I told them they get saved before they get killed or wind up in the hospital. <laughs> you may find this hard to believe, but I meant it. Try to tell somebody, yeah, he flunked. So here's what the Holy Spirit helped me with. Grab hold of some mercy. He's here to help us all. Well, I wear this because of you. I wear this to help you. And I just leave. Let's stand together and close in prayer. The whole body of Christ, all of us, need His mercy. Go like this. We receive so much mercy. And now we need to show mercy. And now we need to give mercy away. Can I hear an amen? And God can help us change. 
In those situations that are hard for us, there's not a one person here that can't, they, that cannot relate to having a hard ch- a problem somewhere, a challenge somewhere, correct? Every one of us, some kind of challenge in some area. The devil wants to make sure we flunk. But how many of you know the Holy Spirit wants to help us give him glory and help us succeed? So I've learned a lot in the journey, and I believe we all will and have. And with that, I'm going to close. And I pray that you and everybody online would receive today's word as a word of encouragement for all of us. And that we could continue with this text and move into the greatest commandments ever of walking in love and what James goes ahead and communicates. There are a lot of ways to be judgmental. There are a lot of ways to show favoritism, not just rich and poor. It's an example here. There's a story in the Bible of a king and a man owed that king a huge debt. And the king said, well, young man, your debt's forgiven. Go and be blessed. And he left. He would have been in prison probably the rest of his life. His debt was so big. Totally forgiven. But what does he do? He starts putting pressure on people that just owe him a little bit in comparison. It cost him. It cost him because he wouldn't show mercy to others after he had received so much mercy. May we be reminded of that today and call on God to help us when we flunk a test and move our red to judgment. I've had folks say awful things to me in the last year. Say this with me. I choose mercy. I choose mercy. I can say this. We love you. These pastors, we love you. We've paid a great price to be here, and we're thankful that God graced us in all the opportunities and that we're still here today. I've told them, I will tell you, it would behoove all of us to ask one another more questions to understand one another, to learn one another. It's better for our relationship to ask questions, to learn, to know, to understand somebody. Hello? Grab a hold of that. It'll work in your family. It'll work in business. It'll work at your job. It'll work in the body of Christ. Mercy just keeps on digging to know more people. I've often said ignorance is a seedbed of prejudice. We get rid of ignorance, the lack of knowledge, and start communicating with the other world. Well, Pastor Martha, you and I came from two different worlds. Tell me about yours. Wow. Go like this. Wow. When people start telling you about their world and where they came from through the mercy of God, the grace and love we saw at the cross, it's amazing how God has helped people. You ever mess up and think you can never get back to where you were? Sure you have. We all have. I find that in this hour, if we don't embrace mercy, that we'll find ourselves distanced from the ministry of reconciliation, seeing friends strengthened in their relationship, families strengthened in their relationship, marriage is strengthened in their relationship. Being judgmental will move you from, would you have me in my Bible, please? will move you from reconciliation. And we'll cover more later. And everybody said, all right, we're going to pray and I'm going to close. As you leave, the elements are there. You can take communion home and have it at home or you can have communion here. If you want to come up to the altar, we'll have a few chairs out. Pastors will sit and pray with you or stand and pray with you. And you can have communion here or you can take it home and have it at home. And we all said, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to read this text over us, and then we'll just start worshiping. You can go as the Lord releases you. My Bible's new, I'm sorry. For I received, takes me a while to get to the page. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread. We had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We continue to read in the text and we come before you, Lord, in a moment of prayer. We ask you to forgive us of our sins when we sin against you. We ask you to forgive us when we eased over into judgment and stepped out of mercy. And we look to you for mercy today. And if we need to make restitution with someone, or we need to go ask them to forgive us for our wrong actions, thoughts, and deeds, we want to go. And as we take the cup today and take the bread, we're reminded of you. Your body was broken for us. And in the taking of the bread, there's healing and life. And we speak healing and life to one another in love. We would just say to people, I want, you, I want to ask you to forgive me. I've been too harsh. I've been too judgmental. I didn't move to the side of compassion. My words and actions didn't reflect Jesus. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you'll help us to be successful, that we can bring glory to you, successful in obeying the word to glorify you. We thank you for the body of Christ. We speak healing to our church family, to our extended family, wherever they may be. We ask you to come along in miracles and show them mercy and kindness. In Jesus' name, and all the church say, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. You're free to worship. We have some chairs up here. If you'd like to come, we'd like to pray with you. Feel free to worship. Stay for a while. Abide in His presence. Take the cup and bread. God bless you. Hope to see you on Monday night at prayer. Thank you. As we come to the conclusion of our service, hey, thank you for joining us, being online with us. We so enjoy you being a part in our relationship and being a part of what God is doing. We consider it an honor. We thank the Lord has given us opportunity to share what's happening here at Whitehorse with all of you wherever you are. I want to encourage you and remind you, if you would like to give, there are different ways to give. You can give online, whcc.net. You can give by phone by calling the church, 765-477-1111. You can send check or money order to the address here, 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Or you can come by and give in person. Your giving helps us maintain, sustain, and continue the work of the gospel and reaching out to the nations. Be sure to tithe your local church. Be a blessing to your pastors, your elders, and your leaders. Send your testimonies to us, please. We love to hear your testimonies and share them. My testimony at whcc.net. Be sure to pray with one another as we've come to conclusion. Let the theme of the message today and what Holy Spirit is doing be joined with faith that you might move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Thank you for our relationship. Thanks for all you've done to help us carry out the vision. God bless you.